Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try the problem on your own. Okay, so they tell us the polynomial function contains the factors x, x minus 2, and x plus 5. Which graphs below could represent the graph of this function? So let's think about this. We've got these three factors, x times x minus 2 times x plus 5. And the, this is the, let's call it f of x. This is, this is our function factors into this. So to think about what this function is, we can distribute. Let's multiply, you know, you can multiply x by x minus 2, and then distribute that to x plus 5. You can do x plus 5 times x minus 2, and then distribute that to x. We can do it either way. I'm going to try multiplying these two binomials first. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is plus 5x. Then we have negative 2 times x is minus 2x, and then minus 10, because negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So this is our function. All right. So then we simplify. The 5x and 2x is 3x. So x squared plus 3x minus 10 times x equals f of x. We distribute the x. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 3x is 3x squared x times negative 10, that's negative 10x. And now what did we just do? Well, we spent all this time because now we can look at our function and tell something kind of simple about it. We know that it's a trinomial, there are three terms, but what really helps us here is this power, the degree of the polynomial. The highest power on the exponent is three, and that tells us that this is called a cubic function, or third degree polynomial, cubic, or third degree polynomial. What does that mean? Well, that tells us a little bit about the shape of the function. It tells us that it's certainly not choice two. Choice two is a quadratic or second degree polynomial. So it would have to read as like x squared plus or minus something. So the highest power for that would have to be x squared. Here we have x cubed. How do we go further? Well, we don't know much about this function, but if these are the factors and it crosses the x-axis, that means that x times x minus 2 times x plus 5 somewhere would have a height of 0. And I'll say that again on the graph, right? These points here and here and here on the x-axis, they're called roots because their heights are 0. Right here, too, actually, on the, on the quadratic. And f of x refers to the height, in a sense, because it's the output. It's when f of x equals 0. So now you've got three numbers multiplied that get 0. So what x values would give you a total product of 0? Well, if x was 0, then the whole product would be 0. So that means one x value that solves this, in other words, one x value we can use to get a height of 0, is 0. So one of the roots must be where x equals 0. And that's the point zero, 0, So so far, this one checks out, and so does this one, 0, 0. Also, if x is 2, Oops. right? How do I know that? Well, if, if we have 2 minus 2, then this term would be 0, and the whole product would be 0. That's the zero product property, right? 0 times anything gets you a result of 0. So if x is 2, this also works. So our second root must be at 2. And that brings us to this graph right here. It has the point 2, 0. That works. This point does not have it, so it can't be correct. Let's just keep going. Also, what could work is if x equals what? If x equals negative 5. If x is negative 5, then this term is 0, and the whole product would be 0. So x could be any one of these three values. If you look at our graph, actually, we have the point right here, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. So the point negative 5, 0 would also be a root. So the only one that works is choice 1. Thanks.